me welcome Maria Papadakis, Toronto FC, in stadium and digital producer, and those the parewila must do a relationship show. Maraki mo, how are ya? I'm good, how are you? Ti orea na se vlepo edo on the show and not just on the field. I know, you know what, I'm really happy to be doing things that uh, are outside of Bimo Field these days. I feel like, you know what, I went from not being there at all to always being there, and now it's like, hey, what am I doing outside of that place? So I love it. It's good to be doing things, getting to talk to people within the community, and it's just like we were talking before. You gotta love seeing Greeks around the entertainment industry. It's amazing. Kale, we're two degrees of separation, not six. We're like next to <laughs> each other. We always find one another. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I'm not gonna lie to you because I love TFC. I come to the games. Every time I would hear Maria Papadak, so I'd be like, I need to have her on the show. I manifested you. I love it. I love it. No, I was when you guys sent me the message to come on the show and be interviewed, I found that it's such an honor. You know what I mean? Getting to communicate with people who are Greek and in the industry, but just getting to talk to you and being on the show, I was so excited. So I'm really happy to be here. And I'm really happy to be showcasing women in the entertainment industry and of Hellenic background. So Edo Pareula, Nasupo Marakimo, how cold does it get on the field sometimes? Oh my, you know what, there it's like undescribable some days and and as much as it is like I have to find the fine line between looking like a Michelin man on camera and looking good with the amount of layers that I have to try and wear. So it's either I freeze or I'm a little cold and I and I and I deal with the rest, but it gets really cold down there. I know um, home opener. I think it was negative. I was of- there. Maria, I was there. And that was cold could not feel my toes by the end of it. Oh, no, no, no. And then I went to the Canada game against Jamaica. No. And I was there with my dad, my sister, my boyfriend. And at one point I turned to them and I go, can anyone feel their toes? Because I can't. And I was so cold. I was standing with a blanket wrapped around my arms. I was, oh, but it was a great experience. I loved it. It was my first time sitting at Bebo Field as a fan in six years. So oh, I was just happy to like be there and get to be a fan for once. Um, but it, it was cold. It gets really cold down there. But at, at some point, you just get used to it. And then your hands, you lose it feeling. It is what it is at that point. I'm a, I'm a paraki. I'm done. I can't feel anything. We move on. Yeah. It's the guys in the no shirts that I'm always like, how are you doing this? And there's a few Greek guys in there, too. They're they're loving it. They're having a great time. They're, they're chanting. <laughs> and my yeah would be trying to put on a scarf and a half for them being like, okay, that's it. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your background. I know you went to Ryerson. You did all the sports, entertainment, because uh, so Ryerson has a great journalist program as well. Yeah. How did you end up with TFC? Yeah, so yeah, I went to Ryerson for sports media. So I was there for four years and it was a great program. I got to learn so much when I was there. Um, but me being an eager beaver, you know, my dad was always like, you're going to go out, you're going to find your work, you're going to work for what you want. So I went out and I was looking for internships in my third year of um, university, uh, which was before my internship semester, which was in fourth year. So I went and I applied to MLSC and I was looking at their media relations internships because I thought it would be a great way to learn the media side of it, but also just like the background of what goes on with the players. And I ended up getting the job as an intern there. And then I had gained such a good relationship with my bosses that instead of me only staying on for four months, I stayed on for the entire MLS Cup winning season. So I got to work that entire year and then... Was it the Jovinko year? Yep, yep. That was the year he was there. I got to meet him. Great guy. Honestly, the players are amazing. Um, And then after that, I ended up applying. My bosses were like, these are the positions that are opening up. Like, you should apply. And I was only 20 at the time. And they were like, I was like, oh my God, this is a big risk, but I'm just going to apply and see what happens. And then they hired me for both in-game and their digital host. And I've been there since. It's my fifth year. I love it. We'll be back and I want you to tell me who's the hottest player on the team right now. <laughs> <laughs> and you get to meet all the soccer players. I mean, I that's a dream for a lot of women out there, Maraki. So who's the hottest? Um, I... <laughs> Honestly, okay, listen, they're all they're all very good looking. They're all very nice guys. Uh, shout out to their wives. They're all stunning as well. So to be honest, I think I got to say they're all uniquely looking in their own way. I got I got to say that. I think very for a lot of women, yeah. the girls, Jonathan Osorio is a fan favorite to girls around Toronto. You know, he's a Toronto guy. He's got the little bad boy look as well. <laughs> I think I think a lot of a lot of girls love him. So I would definitely say he's a fan favorite for a lot of people around the city. 
Okay, I like the diplomatic answer. <laughs> and you saw Ronaldinho the other day on the game. I did. Honestly, I was fangirling. Um, him and when I'm uh, when I got to see Zlatan Ibrahimovic, that was another uh, fangirl moment uh, for myself. I w I didn't know that he was coming to the game until I got there, and then they were like, "Okay, Maria, like we're gonna have you field side. We're gonna try and get some stuff with him." And I had gone up to him and I introduced myself and he was like, hi, it's so nice to meet you. And his translator helped us talk a little bit. And then he, he had left the stadium within 10 minutes. He was like, I'm too cold. I'm done. So after halftime, <laughs> he had left. He was freezing. I think that's the first time he's ever worn a win winter coat like that. I, I felt so bad for the guy. Um, but it was amazing. I, I'm so fortunate to have all these opportunities to meet these players that I watched growing up. So, I was going to say, did you grow yeah. up with a dad who was obsessed with soccer? Because that was my life. Oh, yeah. My dad coached me and my sisters for a few years. And I remember if I had an off game all the way home, I heard it all the way, all the way, all the way home. But how, what I did wrong, how I should have been better. On Saturday mornings, I'd sit with my dad and watch soccer. And he goes, you should learn skills from them <laughs> and everything. So... And even with like the ethnic Yamada, we have like the whole going, everything going on in here. There's only Biako, there's Panathinaiko. So it's always a, a, a conversation to be had about soccer around my house. You know what? My dad never had a son. I was his little boy. I grew up with oh, me too. And <laughs> yeah. We should have diaries, like the daughter's yeah. soccer dads. Yeah, and, and you know what? It definitely is of the princess diaries, it's the Greek diaries. And I think that's the way it should work. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> How proud are your your parents right now that you grew up with soccer, you played soccer, and now you're at BMO Field every week? Yeah, no, honestly, my parents, um, they're very proud. They've always advocated for me. You know, obviously, media is not like the traditional career many people go into, especially as a woman in sports specifically, right? So um, they were always super supportive. They were always making sure that even on um, days where I would have People, you know, I didn't get the job or I didn't do what I wanted. They were always like, this is just a step into learning more about yourself and learning more about the industry. And then my parents ended up buying season tickets when I first started. And now they're at every game. They haven't missed a game um, unless they're in Greece, of course, because the Greece always wins. Um, but, you know, that. <laughs> but no, they're, they're super supportive and I, I couldn't th I ask for better parents. Yeah. And. All the, the entire summer, you're on BMO Field. So when do you go to Greece? That's very I, important. I don't. I don't. I haven't been in seven years. The last time I was there, um, I was, yeah, it was for my cousin's wedding. It was actually the year before I got hired. So I was, um, it was, I was in second year university. So I was 19 uh, when I had been there last. And then I haven't been since. So it's been, uh, it's been a long time. But I, I'm hoping to get there. At some point within the next year, year and a half. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah. What's your favorite Greek? Who's your favorite Greek singer? Oh, I gotta say uh, Argyros. And we'll be back. And Maraiki, how important do you think is your your heritage when it comes so to your important. career? So important for me, you know, as much as um I used to give my parents heck growing up all the time. I'd be like, I do not want to go to Greek school. I do not want to go to Greek dance. Why am I going? I My Saturday morning should not be spent here. I should be with all my friends or at soccer. <laughs> and you know what? I appreciate it so much now. Um, and that when I have kids, I want them to do the exact same thing. And it, it's just so important because you get to learn more about your culture each and every time you get to communicate when you go to Greece, you don't feel out of place. Um, you know, so for me, it's, it was so integrated into my life as a kid that now I, I, I value it right. Every Greek concert with my friends, you know, all my Greek dance friends are the friends I'm friends with. Now my sister's marrying one of the guys who went to Greek dance with. So like, you know what I mean? It's, it, it's become such a community and we're all just a big family that I will never, ever regret and doing any of that. So I love and we have all those embarrassing photos of us in the costumes for Greek dance that I will never lose sight of. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's all fun, right? <laughs> so why, why soccer? Would you have gone, let's say the Raptors or somewhere else, or did you, want to stay in the soccer industry for me i wanted to stay in the soccer industry i i loved it i still do love it obviously i played it growing up and for me just being 
such a soccer fan and you know like I mentioned my dad being so soccer oriented it became a part of me and I honestly like the team has just become a big part of my life and you know for them taking a risk on a 20 year old to get into this position you know back then it, they've just shown such passion and and at TFC you know it's a smaller organization than the Raptors and T uh, and then I'm um, Toronto Maple Leafs sorry it's a smaller organization and TFC is more just like super family oriented. Everywhere you go, every time you go into the, the, the training grounds, everyone says hi. Everyone takes a moment to ask how you're doing. Everyone will remember if you said you had this going on, they'll ask you how it went. That's so nice. it's such a big family in there and and I, and I love it. And, you know, the day when the time comes for me to move on to something next, it'll be a very hard day for me. But do they ask about Greek food and where they should go eat? So do you want to laugh? So when I was an intern, my my bosses loved the greek food mm -hmm. and so i used to say my mom makes you know tzatziki from scratch olive dip from scratch uh from scratch so i used to tell them all these things and they're like marie you have to bring it in so my mom one day brought all these dips in with pizza and it was great and it became like an annual thing and they would call it dip day at the <laughs> training grounds so on like one every few months, my mom would come in with tiropitas, panakopitas, you know, the dips, and everyone would come in, some of the players would come and eat, and it would just be the dip day. She's and, the uh, real MVP of TFC Kori team with your oh, mom. Oh, yeah, they'd be like, when's your mom coming? Like, we see you enough, we want to see your mom and the food. And I was like, when oh, is my she God, coming? So I'll join too, just so you know. <laughs> Next time we do it, I'm going to call you up and be like, we got, a, we got an invite, dip days around the corner. <laughs> so that's so they definitely love the Greek heritage there. And you know what? Even the 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 chefs at TFC, they do like different days and they have like apanada some days. They do like different things around the world. So they try to cater to everyone's cultures and it's it's a beautiful thing. So yes, the Greek heritage is definitely announced at TFC. <laughs> I love it. And as a female in a very dominated world like the sports industry, yeah. how do you feel? Because you're like you're the face of TFC right now. How does that feel? And what are some of the obstacles at the same time? Yeah, you know what? When I first started, number one, I was young. Uh, and, you know, I used to have a lot of people be like, oh, who is this, you know, young blonde girl? She probably doesn't know what she's talking about. Girls don't know soccer. Girls don't know analytics. They don't Let me know you offside, Pestos. Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, like they would just always use like what I looked like as a way to demean what I was doing. So, oh, whatever. She's just a blonde, pretty girl. She just smiles. And like it, you have to learn to just get over those comments, because anytime you're a female in any industry, just like in the fitness industry, the business industry, marketing industry, you will always get torn down in a certain way because everyone always underestimates what you can do. So the barriers that I had to go with were just proving people wrong. So the first year of my my job there was me proving a lot of people wrong. And it kind of gives you a little bit more confidence and a little more fire under your butt because you're like, I know you're wrong and I'm proving you wrong and I'd love to see you when you you be quiet. So <laughs> it's, it's kind of like, yeah, be quiet. So you know what I mean? It, that's what I had to go through. But now everyone, you kind of gain a level of respect after being there for so long and people just know who I am. Um, but you got to have thick skin not only as a female in the sports industry, just being in the media industry alone, you got to have thick skin. Everyone's going to love you. And that's something that I had to learn because I've always been just like a friendly person. And I love want everyone to be my friend. I want everyone to love me. I love everyone. It's just like kind of how I was. It's the that we've been raised into. Yeah, exactly. Showing respect, showing love, bringing people in. And you have to learn that people are going to screw you over and that you can't trust everyone that says they have the best outcome for you and that you have to have a thick skin. Not everyone's going to love you and you just got to do what you got to do. And that's it. I love it. I can't wait to watch next time at the TFC uh, game. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I, and I hope to talk soon and be back. <laughs> back. <laughs> she like yeah.